Inside America's Boardrooms, the informational show for board members and corporate secretaries. Brought to you with knowledge partners, NASDAQ, the Center for Audit Quality, and PwC. Along with content contributors, Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodridge and Rosati, Donnelly Financial Solutions, and the Society for Corporate Governance. Welcome to this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. I'm T.K. Kerstetter, CEO of Boardroom Resources and the editor-at-large at Corporate Board Member Magazine. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to the show. Today we're going to be talking about the role of a board finance committee. And joining me, um, as someone who's had that experience, is Cynthia Hostetler, who's a board member and chair of the finance committee for Vulcan Materials Company. Welcome, Cynthia. Thank you, T.K. So, before we get into the finance company, talk a little bit, educate our audience on what exactly Vulcan Materials is. Sure. Uh, so Vulcan Materials is the largest uh, construction aggregates company in North America. So think rock. Uh, they are a member of the S&P 500 and have a market cap of about $16 billion. So a good sized company. Yes. So you chair the finance committee. And it's interesting because not all companies have finance committees. So um, maybe you could explain sort of what the mission is sure. of Vulcan Materials Board's mm -hmm. Finance Committee and also, in the end, how it contributes to um, the board or to the company. Absolutely. Um, so I'll preface that by saying, as you know, TK, as you illustrated in one of your more recent articles, uh, uh, board governance and board committee governance is not a one-size-fits-all. Uh, many different types of committee structures can work in different situations. Uh, we find that for uh, companies that want to have a finance committee, there are some characteristics of these companies, most likely. A Harvard Business uh, study, Harvard Business School study recently showed that about 12 percent of the top 6,000 companies in America have finance commi committees and they have the characteristics of being large, large cap companies, public in nature, and usually have complex balance sheets. Uh, so that would mean uh, multiple financings, uh, uh, intricate financings, and usually a lot of leverage. Um, so, I think it's important to know not all companies need to have a finance com company, uh, committee, but there are good candidates. Um, another reason for having a finance uh, committee is if your uh, audit committee is quite overburdened. Um, some people will strip out finance committee duties, which are kind of more forward-looking, and form a finance committee with strategy, uh, forecast, acquisitions and leave the more regulatory and um, uh, internal audit type things to the audit committee. Uh, so the main things that I've seen in finance committees that are the most important duties, their missions if you will, uh, come in three different levels. There are three different types of oversight that the finance committee performs. The first one would be previewing uh, previewing board matters prior to that uh, subject going to the board. Uh, probably the best examples there would be uh, previewing um, financial results. So every finance committee meeting we have, we look at uh, the financial results for the company quarter to date, uh, year to date, and we look at why we might be exceeding our, our goals, our expectations, what things might be dragging us down, and um, where profitability or lack thereof is coming from. Uh, another thing we do, we preview. We preview the one to five uh, year financial forecast. And uh, that's a great uh, thing for a finance committee to do because then you really get into strategy, we get into capital expenditure, what kinds of capex is going to be needed to, to promote this growth over the five year period. And I think that's an important thing for a finance committee. Uh, another preview that we do is we do a preview before it goes to the board of equity ownership. And what that means is, is that we look carefully at who owns our stock, who's buying our stock, 
who's selling our stock, and really importantly, what kind of meetings they've had with the different institutional investors in the last three months, what issues might have been raised at those meetings, and what uh, meetings they have coming forward. Also, if you have any activist issues in your uh, portfolio, that would be discussed, communications with activists and so forth, that would be previewed at, at finance before you take it to full board. So the second duty that a finance committee engages in is review and recommendation to the board. So you review it firsthand, do a deep dive, and then you recommend to the board for their final approval. So that would include things like financial plans, um, very importantly, capital expenditure budget, where you're going to put your CapEx for the next year, what kind of green fields you might be embarking on. Um, another equally important issue would be the appropriate capital structure, the targets for your capital structure. Um, what does your debt portfolio look like? How much um, fixed uh, debt do you have versus floating? What appropriate target of debt and equity? Uh, and what appropriate ratios for uh, debt to EBITDA? Those are the types of things that would be discussed and then, and then sent on to the, to the full board for approval. Uh, lastly, you have those duties that will just stay with the Finance Committee. They do not have to be uh, taken on for approval at the, at the board level. And a lot of things um, involving the uh, retirement plans uh, will sit with the Finance Committee. So we will discuss and approve annual funding for those uh, retirement plans. Uh, the, we will study the impact on the balance sheet of those plans, and we will also uh, approve the, the many of the vendors uh, for the retirement plans at the finance committee level. So is your finance committee at Vulcan Materials made up of just independent directors, or is it like an executive mm -hmm. committee where there's a mix of right. officers and board members? What, yes. What's the committee itself made up of? Yeah, that's an excellent question. The committee is only made up of independent directors, uh, but obviously the CFO is an integral part of the uh, committee and also the vice president for finance and so forth. So we have presentations from management uh, and executives uh, to the committee, but the committee, the committee members, the voting members, are only independent directors. So it sounds like, hearing what you said, there's some strategy committee stuff, there's some finance stuff, there's some audit stuff. It seems mm -hmm. like there's, uh, but it makes perfect sense when you're looking at a larger company use of capital, all those issues that uh, yes. certainly would be good strategy. So, but you don't have to have a financial expert because no. they don't have the same obligation that the audit committee has. Right. Uh, but you still need people that are very knowledgeable in finance. So what, yeah. what kind of people do you, mm -hmm. you have to recruit on your committee and how do you go about finding them? Right. So uh, we think it's best to have a mix of backgrounds on the Finance Committee. Uh, obviously, it's very helpful to have a sitting CFO of a public company that is approximate size of uh, Vulcan Materials and would have similar issues as Vulcan Materials and would be in a sector that is similar to uh, aggregates. Uh, and obviously they see so much in their day-to-day -day that that's very helpful to the committee. Uh, secondly, it's helpful to have a uh, banker, uh, a, a senior commercial banker. Um, they have a good uh, knowledge of the private debt markets and financings are an integral part of what our committee does. In the same manner, it's also interesting to have a former investment banker or research analyst on the committee as well because they have good knowledge of the public markets, right? They know about equity uh, issuances, debt issuances, and what's going on in the market. Uh, of course, my favorite uh, to have is where uh, the role I fill is um, a, a former senior leader in asset management. Uh, particularly if they have good knowledge around uh, mutual funds because that's everybody's favorite investor, right? Um, and just knowledge about the institutional investor uh, uh, sector as, as a whole. So, well, Cindy, you know that we've always been fans of saying there isn't one size that fits all yes. and every company has to look at 
what they need to support their business. In Vulcan's case, it sounds like a finance company fills a very important portion. Mm -hmm. It sounds like the board has the opportunity to take deeper dives and make very good recommendations to the board. Um, all that sounds great and, and you know, certainly would be, we're seeing a growth in the amount of finance companies mm -hmm. only because of the complexity of doing business today. Yes. So I wanted to thank you for taking the time to thank join you. us and educating our audience on uh, how Vulcan handles its finance committee. And that will conclude this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back again next week when we take another look at a critical topic that'll help you be a better board member or committee member. So we'll see you then. Join us again next week for Inside America's Boardrooms. Brought to you with knowledge partners, NASDAQ, the Center for Audit Quality, and PwC. Along with content contributors, Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodridge and Rosati, Donnelly Financial Solutions, and the Society for Corporate Governance.